Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Welcome to Unit 7 of the Major Scale Maestro. In this lesson today, we're going to be checking out melodic sequences. Now, one very clear early memory I have of my kind of rock guitar journey was watching this Ingve Malmsteen uh, instructional video. And he played this line. It was really, really fast scale line, but it seemed to last forever. And I really couldn't figure out what was going on because it was like, the scales, I know they've got like 16 notes. If I play them as that fast, they're over in no time. Now, I guess it was so fast that I couldn't really hear that he was using this technique called a melodic sequence. But I remember when I asked my teacher about it and said, like, how's he doing this? He's like, oh, it's just this number patterns applied to scales. And I was like, hey, here we go. I've always been kind of reasonable at math, so I found this stuff kind of fun. It's really, really useful and actually very musical as well. It's not, even though it's a, it is taking a maths sequence and applying it to a scale, which just doesn't sound very cool or hip, but it's used by everyone. It's used in the blues, it's used in rock, it's used everywhere, this, I, this concept. It just sounds good. I think that inherently as humans, we like the order of a, a musical sequence. It's been used like way back Bach was using it, and all this. You'll, you'll start to recognize it. So the way to get started with this is to number the notes of the scale. We're going to start in pattern one. So that root note, that would be note number one. So we just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And then we're going to use a number sequence and apply it to the scale. So a really good one to start off with is one I call four in a line. And basically we play up four notes from each scale degree. Now as a number sequence, it'd be one, two, three, four, then we start on two, two, three, four, five, then we start on three, three, four, five, six, then we start on four, four, five, six, seven. So counting four numbers up, starting on each number. So it's a four note sequence. I think it's a good idea to always have like a simplified practical version of a number sequence rather than thinking just like one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. I just think of it as like four scale steps up, starting off each note of the scale. I think that's easier for me to remember. Let's try applying it now. So the sequence was one, two, three, four. So we're going to play first note, second note, third note, fourth note. Then we start on scale degree two and play up four notes. Two, three, four, five, that would be. Then starting on the third degree, three, four, five, six. Then starting off the fourth degree, four, five, six, seven. Then starting off the fifth degree, five, six, seven. Eight. Now the key thing here is to remember what note you started on. So here I'm thinking starting on that note, but my, I'm already thinking that's the next one I'm going to start on. And th this one, then this one, then this one, then there. Now, I've been playing a little bit disjointed so that you can hear the pattern clearly. This one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six. But as soon as you've got the concept in your ears and your fingers, you want to take away that lumpy timing and play it consistently. So you'll be doing this. I would start with just ascending, and I'll just point out one little technical problem that you're going to encounter there, which is a roll with the little finger. So when you get up to this part, here, you're going to have to put that little finger down a little flatter on the second string and roll it onto the tip. Here, flat tip. There are a couple of different approaches when you reverse a melodic sequence, the easiest way to think of it is 
renumbering the scale starting on the thinner string. So we'd have that as being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, like that. And then going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, like that. And then going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But for me, particularly this pattern, I just think we're going down the scale, going down four notes off each scale degree. So starting on the top note, then the next note down, next note down, next note down, next note down, etc. And again, it's perfectly okay to be doing it in this kind of jerky motion to get used to the patterns, but as soon as you're confident with it, you want to try and remove that. start applying these melodic sequences to other scale patterns you're going to find there's some challenges when it comes to the fingerings there's some decisions to be made I'm going to try and give you a few tips but part of the journey is you now figuring out the fingering that works best for you let's take this four in a line sequence if we started in pattern two if you didn't remember it was that one so far so good now We've got that note. If we do that, then we've got to try and jump with that second finger, so we'd have to put it down flatter. Ah, uh, now we're... Oh, we're going to have to do a shift with the little finger. That's not a good idea. A better one for this one is to skip to first finger as soon as possible. When we descend the pattern in pattern two, we've got some more problems to think about. pattern is going to present some kind of fingering challenge that you're going to have to figure out and that's part of the fun of the whole thing. I should also mention the top note of the scale. Generally speaking when you're playing scales up and down I recommend that you only play the top note once. So as you're turning around you hit that top note and it gets played once and then descending straight away. When you're doing melodic sequences quite often you'll want to hit the top note twice. Okay to have So generally speaking, that top no hitting the top note twice will keep you in sync with the metronome. Particularly pattern like this, which is four notes long, you're probably going to practice that as either eighth notes or sixteenth notes. Sixteenth notes being four notes per metronome click. So if you play that top note only once and immediately descend, the click won't be falling uh, at the beginning of the sequence each time, which can just feel a little bit awkward. Another really great pattern that I'd like you to try out is three in a line. Okay, like four in a line, three in a line has three notes ascending or descending off each scale degree. So let's just have a little look at that one. Again, there's scale pattern one. If we number it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, etc. Then we've got one, two, three, starting on the second degree, on the third degree, on the fourth degree. Now, an easy way to think of this is you're going up three, down one, and up three. Back one, back one, back one, back one. And down.
as usual I'd recommend that you get really comfortable with it in pattern one before you start applying it to the other patterns because you're going to come across fingering conundrums that you've got to figure out. I do think there's a lot of value of really getting familiar in one pattern before you move it around. There's something about the mechanics of it that does make it a lot easier to nail it in one pattern before you start moving it around. One of the cool things about melodic sequences is that it's a real grower. You'll find that you're probably working on different melodic sequences as long as you play guitar. It's a real fun way of exploring scales, training out your fingers to do different things. There's loads of good stuff about it. Uh, there's one more pattern that I want to give you just as a kind of an idea, something that you might want to explore if you want to get into doing melodic patterns on your own as well. And this one I call reverse four in a line. So it's like we took each block from the regular four in a line pattern and reversed it. So instead of going one, two, three, four, we're going to go four, three, two, one. The second block was originally two, three, four, five. Now it's going to go five, four, three, two. So it's basically each section has been reversed. Reverse four in a line. Sounds like this. I think this is one of my favorite ones. So now we'd start on the fourth scale degree and go down four. Then we'd start on the fifth scale degree. Go down for the sixth scale degree, seventh, eight, nine, ten, etc. Obviously, when we descend the scale, now we're going up four scale degrees as we descend the scale. to try out your own sequences but I would recommend getting hip with these particular ones first remember we've also checked out playing in thirds so that would be a really great little kind of scale warm-up routine we'll be playing a scale up and down then playing it in thirds then playing four in a line three in a line and reverse four in a line if you fancy a little bit of a challenge don't go for speed go for accuracy and it's training your fingers up to do new things what you'll probably find when you go to improvise is that your fingers will naturally start doing these kind of patterns now it wouldn't have to be a whole big run of it because then it sounds like a scale exercise what you're looking for is being able to train your fingers to use little sections of it that might come out in your improvising and teaching your fingers to break out of just playing the scale straight up and down when you do these kind of things you're just opening up your fingers to new ideas and teaching your musical imagination new ideas or new sounds that you might start to hear when you improvise. This kind of stuff, definitely usually easier to have the sheet music in front of you. So don't forget to download the PDF over on the website. Just hit that download icon. All that stuff is free for registered users. So I really hope you make making use of it. Definitely the kind of thing where if you're following it along with your eyes, I think that can be really helpful. Hope I'll see you for the second part of Unit 7 where we're going to be looking at using string bends within the major scale. It ain't just a blues thing. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.